Okay, we have learned how to how we can calculate enthalpy for water vapor and also uh, dry air. Now, to calculate the enthalpy of the air or atmospheric air, we need to know how much of the air is uh, water vapor and how much is the dry air, and we need to find relationship between the the, the amount of water vapor in the, and dry air. To do uh, this calculation, we can define a specific and relative humidity of air. First, let's uh, define a specific humidity of the air. The amount of water vapor in the air can be specified in, uh, in various ways, which here we have absolute or specific humidity, which is the the easiest and uh, most logical method which is uh, specified directly by uh, division of the mass of water vapor in a unit mass of dry air the mass of water vapor present in a unit mass of dry air we call this absolute or specific humidity or uh, sometimes it is called humidity Ratio. So all of these three are identical, absolute humidity, specific humidity, and humidity ratio. And we show that by omega, and we can calculate uh, easily by this equation. Omega is equal to mv, which is uh, mass of the water vapor in terms of kilogram, divided by ma, or mass of the dry air, based on kilogram. So we have this equation to calculate specific or absolute humidity which MV and MA if you know we have already introduced the water vapor and also dry air as ideal gases. So based on the ideal gas law we can write this equation which MV or mass of the water vapor is equal to PV or pressure of water vapor times the volume of water vapor, which is same as the volume of the dry air, the atmospheric air actually, divided by RV or uh, gas constant for the water vapor times temperature, divided by MA, which is equal to PA divided by V divide, uh, times V uh, divided by R A T T is temperature of the atmospheric air or temperature of the no temperature you know here in the atmospheric air the atmospheric air which we have a part of that you know we have air inside this atmospheric air so we have air dry air uh, plus vapor or water vapor so temperature of this mixture is constant for both of them. Volume is same. Only pressure of them is different. PV here and PA here. And R or gas constant for them also is different. So these uh, uh, 2V and T will cross out from this equation. We will have PV divided by RV divided by PA. By, divided by R A and based if you refer to the tables which we have for the gas constant for water vapor and uh, uh, gas constant for uh, dry air you will understand that this ratio will be equal to 0 0.622 and PV divided by PA can be written like this so omega based on the pressures of the dry air and the water vapor pressure or partial pressure of the vapor can be written like it. Omega is equal to 0 0.622 PV divided by PA. So we can calculate the specific humidity if we know the, these two pressures. Or we can write this equation like this, which is omega equal to 0. 0 0.622 PV divided by P minus PV, which P here is the total pressure. This equation is more common in the calculation of uh, 
uh, specific humidity later we will see why it is more common so this is the equation or this one uh, which we can use to calculate absolute or specific humidity of atmospheric air okay now you have seen what is absolute uh, or a specific humidity of the atmospheric air next is uh, relative humidity we are going to define relative humidity and i will tell you why it is important but before we define relative humidity we need to define saturated air i'm going to define this for you by an example imagine we have one kg of dry air by definition dry air contains no water vapor the first definition i told you and thus its specific humidity is zero if you remember specific humidity was m uh, v divided by m a so if m v is zero then omega will be zero as well so the specific humidity when we don't have any water vapor is equal to zero now let's add some water vapor to this dry air so if we Mm, add to water to this atmospheric air or to this dry air m v will uh, increase and it will not be zero and as much as we increase m v the omega also will increase but we have a limit for that which uh we call that uh, maximum amount of humidity which at the atmospheric air can hold and it is saturated uh, air actually based on the definition as more vapor or moisture is added the specific humidity will keep increasing until the air can hold no more moisture it means if we add more moisture to the air it will not uh, be uh, it will not be uh, gas or it will not remain in gas phase and it will condense and it will convert from gas or water vapor to the liquid or water at this point the air is said to be saturated with moisture and it is called saturated air so saturated air uh, at each temperature means the air which uh, holds maximum amount of the humidity any moisture introduced into saturated air will air will condense and as i told you the saturated air or uh, the uh, maximum amount of temperature the moisture which air can hold depends on the temperature the amount of water vapor in saturated air at a specified temperature and pressure can be determined from equation which you have already seen omega equal to point zero point six hundred twenty two pv divided by p minus pv if we substitute this pv by pg or pressure of saturated gas or the saturation pressure of water at that temperature we can calculate the uh, specific humidity uh, we can uh, find the saturated air humidity actually where p again here is the uh, total pressure of the uh, atmospheric air here is an example for saturated air the vapor pressure is equal to the saturation pressure of water this is the definition you need to uh, memorize this so for example we have air at 25 degrees celsius and 100 kilopascal room temperature and at the sea level then saturated pressure for water at this temperature is equal to 3.1698 kilopascal then for dry air p v is equal to zero in this equation p v is equal to zero omega also will be equal to zero 
for unsaturated A, PV is less than this P uh, saturated pressure of water at this temperature. And for saturated air, PV is equal to P uh, saturated at this temperature or PG at this temperature, which is 3.1698 kilo Pascal. So by this, you can see definition of the uh, saturated air. And this is important uh, for our next topic, which is about relative humidity. Just you need to know that the maximum humidity or moisture which uh, air can hold depends on the temperature of the air and we call that saturated air. The maximum, uh, uh, the air which uh, contains maximum amount of possible moisture content in that temperature. Now let's see what is the relative humidity. Okay, you have seen what is uh, absolute humidity and also you have seen what is, uh, what is uh, uh, saturated air. For, uh, and a general information is the humidity of the air is an effective parameter on our comfort level. If you remember at the beginning of this chapter, I told you that we are going to discuss about air conditioning systems and we are going to see how humidity is effective on our comfort level. But the uh, humidity, which is actually effective on our comfort level, is not a specific humidity. However, it is an effective parameter, but the amount of the humidity or a specific humidity compared to the maximum humidity which we have in for saturated air, we determine our comfort level. And the humidity which you can uh, read on the news, for example, or here, uh, here and there, is the relative humidity and not a specific humidity. It means how much is the humidity which we have now compared to the maximum humidity which we can have uh, for air in the, in the current temperature, for example. So, here we define relative humidity of air, which is more important parameter compared to the absolute humidity to determine the comfort, uh, comfort level of uh, human. The comfort level depends on more on the amount of moisture the air holds or MV relative to the maximum amount of moisture that air can hold at same temperature or MG. So the ratio of these two quantities is called relative humidity or phi. You can see also here an example. Imagine air, uh, we have air in 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere pressure. Imagine we have one kg of dry air, 0 0.01 kg of uh, uh, water vapor. And maximum water vapor, which this amount of uh, water, this amount of air at this temperature and pressure can hold is 0 0.02 kg. So for the air or atmospheric air with these uh, properties, a specific humidity or omega is 0 .01, 0 0.01. Kg of H2O by Kg of dry air. Simply we can divide uh, 0 0.1 by Y. M, uh, v, uh, MV divided by MA. How about the relative humidity? Relative humidity here is 50%. Why? Because the maximum MV or uh, water vapor which this air can hold is 0 0.02 kg. And what we have here is 0 0.01 kg. So 0 0.1 divided by uh, 0 0.02 will be 50 times uh, 100. It will be 50%. So phi here is 50% or relative humidity. Uh, humidity. This is the humidity which we hear and we measure usually. Later also we will discuss how we can measure this humidity. So phi is equal to mv divided by 
mg and similarly uh, mv is mass of the water vapor mg is mass of the uh, saturated uh, water vapor at the t temperature so again we will cross out and finally we have only pv divided by pg again phi is dependent on the uh, partial pressure of the vapor and saturated pressure of the water vapor or as you can see here pg is equal to uh, is uh, same as saturated pressure at temperature of t which you can find this in thermodynamics table like table a5 or a4 actually for each temperature you can find saturated uh, pressure which it determines the maximum then by that we can determine the uh, relative humidity as well combining these equation with the previous equation which we had here for omega uh, or a specific humidity we can calculate phi equal to uh, phi will be equal to omega p as the absolute pressure divided by 0 0.622 plus omega times p g or omega equal to uh, 0 0.622 pg divided by p minus 5 pg this is just a combination between this equation and uh, previous equation these these two equations then we can have this phi and omega relationship actually phi is omega p and so on and omega e based on the phi also can be defined so if we have omega we can calculate phi if we have phi we can calculate omega and also you may guess that relative humidity is a number between 0 and 1 or between 0 and 100 percent for saturated air the 100 percent is for saturated air zero is for dry air air without temperature relative humidity is zero for saturated air the relative humidity is one or hundred percent and also uh, notice the amount of moisture which air can hold depends on the temperature so relative humidity of air changes with temperature even when it's a specific humidity remains constant what it means this sentence this very important sentence later on also we will uh, see the effect of this so here you know this sentence means if temperature is changed for example from 25 degrees celsius it changed to 30 degrees celsius in same pressure you know these uh you know if ma is constant mv is uh, constant but mv max will change because you can see here it depends on the temperature so however specific humidity this omega will remain constant relative humidity will change if temperature is changed this is one reason uh for you know different feeling different comfort level when temperature is changed and when relative humidity even the humidity is constant and also this is one reason how uh, humidity humidity is effective on the comfort level so if even the moisture content is constant but the temperature is changed then relative humidity will be different and our comfort level will be also different later we will discuss more about that okay you have seen what is specific humidity what is relative humidity and before that you have seen how we can calculate enthalpy for dry air and how we can calculate enthalpy for water vapor now in this slide you are going to see how we can calculate enthalpy of atmospheric air which contains or include dry air and water vapor as you know atmospheric air is a mixture of dry air and water vapor and then enthalpy of air is expressed in terms of enthalpy of dry air and water vapor so usually which we we define enthalpy or a specific enthalpy 
based of uh, based on uh, unit mass of that substance for each substance, for example. But here for air, however, is uh, a mixture of uh, dry air and uh, water vapor. We define enthalpy of the atmospheric air based on the unit mass of dry air. Why? Because dry air or the the part of the air which uh, contains uh, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and so on, usually remain constant during different processes. But only the moisture content or the humidity of the uh, the water uh, vapor in the atmospheric air will change during different processes due to vaporization of the vaporization of the water from lake, from uh, due to raining and so on. The moisture content of the air will change. So here uh, we define uh, we define enthalpy of the atmospheric air based on the unit mass of the dry air. So the enthalpy of atmospheric air is expressed per unit of dry air. The total enthalpy, which is an extensive property, which you need to know from the uh, thermodynamics of atmospheric air, is the sum of the enthalpies of dry air and water vapor. We have already seen how we can calculate them. So H as enthalpy is equal to HA or enthalpy of the dry air plus HV or enthalpy of the water vapor. And you know that here is a specific enthalpy. The specific enthalpy is enthalpy divided by the mass of that substance, for example. Here, HA or enthalpy of uh, dry air is equal to MA times HA plus HV or uh, enthalpy of the vapor is equal to MV, HV. You know, this is a specific, you know, this is the relationship between a specific or any substance it is a relationship between a specific enthalpy and enthalpy so we have ma ha plus mv hv now if we divide these uh, both side of this equation you know this side and this side by ma which is the mass of the dry air we will have um, h or uh, enthalpy or total enthalpy of the atmospheric air per uh, unit mass of dry air is equal to H divided by MA. It is equal to HA, you know, this divided by MA. And only HA remain here plus this divided by MA. MV divided by MA times HV. And if you notice here, MV divided by MA, it is familiar equation for us. It is omega or relative uh, the specific humidity. So enthalpy of the atmospheric air is equal to enthalpy of the dry air plus relative humidity, uh, specific humidity or omega times uh, enthalpy of the uh, water vapor. Or we can write like this H is equal to H. A plus omega Hg, but here you need to notice this H is based on kilojoule kilogram of dry air. This is also important to notice this. Up to here we had H for the unit mass of the substance, but for atmospheric air, H is based on the kilojoule kilogram of dry air. We have this equation to calculate enthalpy of the atmospheric air and why. HV is substituted by HG. You have seen in previous slides that HV is equal to approximately to HG. I have shown to you in the uh, in this slide that uh, HG of HG HV we have less than 50 degrees Celsius usually is equal to HG or enthalpy uh, of saturated vapor. So by this equation, we can calculate enthalpy of the atmospheric air. And here, the temperature, the ordinary temperature of atmospheric air, usually 
is referred to as dry bulb temperature. This is the definition. Dry bulb temperature is the ordinary temperature of atmospheric air, the temperature which you can measure by a thermometer directly. It's called the ordinary temperature of atmospheric air or dry bulb temperature. We define this because later on we will define also the other temperatures for the atmospheric air. We call the temperature which you can directly measure by a thermometer of the air as dry bulb temperature. And we will have also other type of temperature and we will see why we have those kind of temperature. Up to here, you have seen how we can calculate enthalpy of the atmospheric air and also you have, uh, you have seen what is dry bulb temperature. In an example, we will see how we can use this information to calculate different properties for, uh, for air in an imaginary uh, situation. Okay, now we have uh, an example here to see how we can use the information which we have learned up to now. We have a room, you can see its dimensions, 5 meters times 5 meters times 3 meters. The temperature of the air inside this uh, room is 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 100 kilopascal and its relative humidity or phi is equal to 75 percent. This is the information which we have for this room. Now we need to determine the partial pressure of dry air or PA, the specific humidity or omega, the enthalpy per unit mass of the dry air or H, the masses of the dry air, MA, and water vapor, the mass of water vapor in the room, or MV. Now let's see how we can find this information. You know, we just uh, will use the equation which you have learned up to now in this chapter, and also thermodynamics tables. We will see which tables we need to use and also which uh, equation. First of all, let's see which properties we need to find. The constant pressure specific heat of air at room temperature is Cp. You know, first of all, notice here, temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. It is in the range of temperature which we have already discussed. Less than 50 degrees Celsius, higher than negative 10 degrees Celsius. So, specifically, the, uh, the uh, Cp of the uh, air at this temperature is 1.005 kilojoule per kilogram. Kelvin, you can find this also in this table for air at 300 Kelvin or room temperature is equal to, you know, this is Cp equal to 1.005. This is first property which we need to find. Moreover, for the, uh, for water, because here we have water vapor, moisture in the air it is mentioned we have relative humidity equal to 75 percent and we need to calculate also its masses and so on so we need to find some properties for the uh, water vapor at this temperature for water or water vapor at this temperature 25 degrees celsius we have saturated pressure equal to 3.169 8 kilopascal, how we can find it? In table A4, you know, in table A4, we have saturated water temperature table. This temperature, saturated pressure with that, in terms of uh, kilopascal, is equal to 3.1698. So we found the saturated pressure for water at this temperature. And also, we can find a G or saturated enthalpy uh, sat uh, for saturated uh, vapor at this temperature or Hg. Hg, you know, this temperature, let's see where is Hg, it's here, it is 2546.5 uh, kilojoule per kilogram enthalpy for saturated vapor at this temperature. These are our properties uh, and the properties which can, we can find for the air and also for water vapor from the thermodynamic state. 
Then to determine the, you know, the first part, part A E, we need to determine the partial pressure of A or P A. If you remember, we had this equation, P A is equal to P minus P V. P A is the partial pressure, P is absolute pressure, or the total pressure. You know, this this was like this actually. P is equal to P A plus P V. Then to determine PA, we need to uh, write like this. We need to deduct PVR from P. So PA is equal to P minus PV. Okay, we have P, which is mentioned here. The total pressure is 100 kilopascal. And, uh, but we don't know how much is PV. How we can determine that? Here, first of all, you know, we don't have a saturated. Uh, we don't have a saturated air because the relative humidity is 75%. So we have this relationship. If you remember, phi was equal to uh, P. We divided by Pg or pressure of the water vapor divided by uh, saturated pressure of water vapor. So we can restructure this equation and Pv will be equal to phi times Pg. Phi is given 75% or uh, we need to write like this 0 0.075 times Pg. Pg uh, is here, P saturated or uh, pressure saturated uh, pressure at this temperature is equal to 3.6098. Then if we multiply this we can calculate Pv or partial pressure of the water vapor. Once we have this PV, we can calculate PA by this equation or partial pressure of the dry A is equal to 100 P total pressure minus 2.38 is the partial pressure of the water vapor which we have calculated here. Finally, we can calculate PA or partial pressure of the uh, dry A is 97.62 kilo pascal. This is answer for part A. In part B, we need to determine the specific humidity. The specific humidity, if you remember, we had this equation, omega, or specific humidity, is equal to 0 0.622 times PV divided by P minus PV. It's easy to calculate. We have PV, we have P, we just substitute here, and easily we can calculate omega or specific humidity, which is equal to 0 0.0152 kilogram H2O by divided by kilogram dry air. So we can simply calculate the uh, specific humidity. In part C, we need to determine the enthalpy per unit mass of the dry air or H. If you remember, we had this equation. H equal to H A plus omega H V. Here, for H A or enthalpy of dry air, if you remember at the beginning of the uh, chapter, I told you H A air is a uh, ideal gas. We can assume dry air is an ideal gas, and its uh, enthalpy can be ca uh, calculated by this equation. If you remember. It was, uh, it was like this, Cp times T. Cp also, I told you, is equal to 1.005 kJ per kilogram degree Celsius. T temperature is given 25 degrees Celsius. And omega Hv, which, as I told you here, Hv can be approximately assumed to be Hg, enthalpy for the water vapor equal to enthalpy of saturated vapor, the line which I showed you. This is based on this, if you remember. Okay, then here Hv is equal to Hg. So Hg we have already found in the table. Omega we have calculated. Then enthalpy of the air per unit mass of dry air can be calculated simply by this equation, which is equal to 63.8 kJ per dry air. And in part C, in part D, 
we need to determine the masses of the dry air or MA and also the mass of the water vapor in the room. As you know, the air is filled through the room and the volume of the water vapor and also volume of the uh, air or dry air is equal to the volume of the room or volume of the atmospheric air. We can, you know, because all of them are gases and you know this is the properties of gas. It will fill whole uh, uh, the volume of the whole, uh, the, the, the content, the, it, if it is box or any other kind of the container, the gas will occupy whole uh, volume. So we A, or the volume of the air is equal to V of the atmospheric air equal to, uh, this is V of the dry air is equal to volume of the uh, water vapor is equal to volume of the room as the container. So we have the dimension of the room, seven times, five times, five times three. The volume of the room is 25 meter cube. Then to calculate the mass of the air, dry air, mass of the water vapor, we can use the ideal gas law relation. If you remember, we had this Ma is equal to Pa times Va. Pa is the partial pressure of the air. A dry air, Va is the volume of the air, which we have here, 25, uh, divided by Ra times Tra is the constant, uh, gas constant for air times T, which is temperature, but you need to notice that T here should be in term of Kelvin. Need our gas flow, T should be in term of Kelvin. So we have Pa, we have Va, we have calculated it. R, uh, we can find in the we can find R in the table as well. You can see air, the R or gas constant for air is 0 0.2280. Uh, uh, and for steam as well, or water, which we have here, this uh, gas constant or R is 0 0.4615. This table, table A2, is ideal gas. Specific it uh, where uh, various common gases or the other properties as well. Now we have R A here for to calculate mass of the dry air. With same, you know, also for water vapor. I told you in this temperature range and this uh, this pressure, we can say it is ideal gas. Similarly, M will be it will be equal to P V times V sub V divided by R V times T T is temperature. Same for both of them. We also is same for both of them, we can say. P uh, is different, PA, partial pressures. RV also and RA are different. By substitution of uh, these values in our equation and notice about the temperature, it should be in term of uh, Kelvin, 273 plus 25, which is 298 Kelvin. Here we substitute, then we can calculate MA and also we can calculate MV. And also we can simply use this equation MV is equal to omega MA. Once we calculate MA here, we have omega, we have calculated in uh, previous step, then we can simply calculate MV. So we have two different methods to calculate MV, which is 1.3 kilogram of, uh, you know, uh, the mass of the water vapor and the mass of the air is 85.61 kilograms. So you can see how, and this is the uh, answer for part B. So you can see how we can use these equations and also thermodynamics table to, can, to find these properties for the air uh, inside the uh, imaginary room.